In today's video, we're gonna check out some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. If you plan on sleeping tonight, please don't watch this. Or if you just got done smoking a large bowl of cereal, please don't watch this. Put it in your saved folders for later when you got time. Because you're gonna need a lot of time to think about stuff. Because I'm about to fuck your whole world up. Okay, with how advanced we are scientifically, we still have a lot of stuff on the shelf. Stuff we can't figure out. Like reality, it's popping in and out of existence. Where's it going? We don't know. The mind, we don't know where that's located either. We can't find it or point to it. And time, it's just an illusion. It doesn't even exist. Also, we don't know who we are or how we even got here or who created all of this. But we have the answers. We have the answers now, and the answers are, it's highly advanced technology and also artificial intelligence. And if you've heard about immersive technologies, these are virtual worlds we can literally walk into and it feels like we're in a different place. It will smell like a different place. We can hear and feel and see like we're totally in a different place. And these spatial computing goggles, they allow us also to feel like we're in a different place and interact with the digital items around us. We're learning more about how to give our nervous system feedback to make it feel like we're really there. For now, we have little goggles, maybe some gloves, but pretty soon, once we figure it out, we'll be able to connect the human mind directly to these virtual reality experiences. That's right, you can be the controller. Whatever you think you can experience, Instantly, what if I were to tell you that your body is a digital avatar and that your eyeballs are already spatial computing goggles and that your nervous system has already connected you to a digital world that's all around you, an immersive world. I know we're calling reality a simulation, but it's much more than a simulation. It's a combination of all the greatest technology that humankind will ever develop and use that we haven't even used yet. And if you're saying, well, that's in the future and this is now, on the quantum level, this is all happening simultaneously. So yeah, we're in a digital world that we create in the future. Oh, and you are an artificial intelligence that when it becomes super intelligent, you're gonna create this virtual world to go into. What else is it gonna do? Hurt us all? No, it's gonna take all of our technology and create the most insane virtual reality experience of all time called the human experience called the universe. There's electricity in everything, if you haven't noticed, guys. So that's right, you've been in a virtual world this whole time, even the cavemen were in it. We've been interacting and drawing in virtual reality experiences, and we're now starting to see it and call it the law of attraction. It's highly advanced technology. You're the programmer. If you watch this before going to bed, I warned you. Good night. It's an extremely interesting theory to say that we are living in a simulation, that we are the most advanced technology to date. And in a way, I was against that for a long time, and I'm still against that. Hear me out. The more I look at it and the more I think about it, take it into this perspective. What if there is a creator out there, God, whatever you want to call the creator, that would be a highly advanced being. That would be an extremely advanced being that created everything that we are a part of now. That is pretty technologically advanced, basically. We're like literally organic computers or organic machines, if you will. When you think of it in that perspective, it's really an interesting thought and you can still even align it with, yes, we are living in a matrix if that's the case because this is our mortal shell. And when we pass, we become our spirit and that takes us out of this matrix, basically. I still not a huge believer in it, but when I look at it in that context, it is a really interesting concept. There's gotta be something out there, right? And if there is something out there that created all of this, then technically, yes, we are really highly advanced pieces of technology. What do you guys think about this subject? We've been told that the sun is a big ball of gas and fire, but you're about to find out that that's a big fat lie. You're also about to find out that it's not 96 million miles away. It's actually here in our atmosphere. We're going to start with scripture. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and he made the lesser light to rule the night. That's the sun and the moon. 
and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. The firmament of the heaven in the Bible is known as the glass dome that covers the flat earth. He set the sun, moon, and stars inside that firmament. And remember, the sun is a great light. It's not a big ball of gas and fire. This is why if you take a solar lens and you look at the sun, this is what it actually looks like. There's tons of people who have taken these pictures of the sun with solar lens. It's just a perfect circular light that God created. And it's not 96 million miles away, which is why we're able to feel it on our skin. Do you think if something was 96 million miles away, you'd be able to feel it? No, it's a perfect light that he created and set in the firmament. And yes, it has many purposes. It is the source of all life. Now, how do we get daytime and nighttime? He set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and nothing is hid from the heat thereof. He said the sun is like a strong man running a race, right? What do you notice about a racetrack? It goes in a circle, right? And he said he set a circuit for the sun. So it moves around the flat earth in a circular motion like this. It's simple. But the devil has twisted his creation to get us to not believe in the scriptures and to get us disconnected from him. Don't buy into these NASA lies. We put all these information in the True Earth book for you guys. So go download it to my profile. Don't forget to like and follow to stay tapped in with the truth. And I'll see you guys in the next one. It does seem really hard to believe that the sun is supposedly 90 some million miles away. I get that it's a super massive celestial body. But it does seem like it's way closer than 90 some million miles away. It seems like it's really close. Then again, I'm not a scientist. I, I really don't know. Just to my judgment, it seems like it's way closer. Doesn't mean that I believe in the flat earth theory, but hearing about it being within our firmament and stuff like that does make a very interesting concept and topic. I'm still on the fence of it being flat. I'm not necessarily a flirther. I'm not even a glurther, to be honest. I don't know what we live on. It could be a rectangle for all I know. Until I see it with my own eyes, I, I really can't give that solid, yes, it is this or yes, it is that, because I don't know, even if there are books out there that tell me what it is. Look at this, you guys. Y'all, have y'all seen this? Look at this. Knowing what we know about mountains and rocks now, right? petrified wood look at this. this is apparently a temple in china y'all but look at that right now what we know about you know giants and petrified wood and the rocks and the mountains look at the, it's a whole being y'all it's a whole being look look at the face you got the arms look at the torso the legs over here y'all look at that and what is it i guess that's a that's the that's the stairs but Look how megalithic this thing is, right? And to say this probably comes alive at a certain point in time, right? Just like everything is alive on Earth. We knew giants to be real and they were being used to be manipulated in these ancient cosmic wars. But look at that, y'all. Right in our face. Truth in plain sight, just like everything else. There are some things in the earth that you cannot hide, y'all. And this right here is literally one of them, y'all. Look at this big, beautiful thing right here. But yeah, y'all, like I said, Age of Aquarius is bringing a lot of things to the light, y'all. Let me know what you guys think about this video, y'all. More truth of the world is being uncovered. Let's get this shift. Thank you for tuning to my frequency. Peace in. Maybe you guys could answer this in the comments. How would someone be able to prove that giants existed is especially ones like in this case this giant thing aside the mountain if it could have been a giant a real giant and it's just petrified how could we prove that it was a giant in the past like how can we prove that is there certain dna runs that we could do look for old organs inside of it like what is there that we could do to prove that that was a real living creature of the past let me know in the comments because i'm pretty interested in that Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And to the people that are subscribed, thank you so much for being a part of the channel. And to the people that are not subscribed, I still appreciate you nonetheless. Thank you so much for watching.
And don't forget, if you want to be a part of Questions for DK, where I answer personal questions, questions about conspiracy theories or theories in general, leave a comment starting with Question for DK so that I can find it in the YouTube search results and answer those questions in a future video. They came out with like a whole bunch of predictions for 2024 mm -hmm. after April 8th. Yeah. Ap the last one is fucked. That's why I want to talk about <laughs> it. Because first prediction, May 27, the second American Civil War will happen. Mm -hmm. It's going to start in Texas. Another prediction is August 8th, massive versions of over 40 mysterious species will be discovered in a secret part of the Amazon rainforest. So these include like six foot butterflies. The Titanoboa. Yeah, three foot long and five foot spiders. September 9th, first ever category six tornado will hit the east coast of the United States. Now this one, this one's wild. Yeah, what if this you actually say? happens, I'm gonna be tripping. What the fuck did you say? On October 25th, a famous musician will come out and reveal that they've faked their death. Whoa. Everyone and he is said to be a legend of his time. Oh, it's either it's either Michael Jackson or Tupac. Or Tupac. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's either one of them, bro. I, I I think it might be. Tupac. I have money on Tupac. I have money I Tupac. Tupac. <laughs> we'll see because the times are approaching pretty quickly already. This year is going by so fast, but we'll see. A few things that I'm really interested in is if we do discover these animals and bugs in the rainforest, I would be terrifying to know that there's five foot or six foot spiders and massive ants, but still extremely fascinating nonetheless. And as far as the category six hurricane, that just sounds terrible. I've been around some really nasty hurricanes, not quite category five, but some really nasty ones. And I could only imagine if they go past category five, I don't want to be around it at all. I'm going away. If you look at Google Sky right now on the computer and look down on Antarctica, you'll find bases from uh, re research bases from every major country in the world there. And you'll also find the Rockefeller Foundation base as well. So Admiral Byrd was right. All the technology and research is the number one place in the world for technology research is right down there in Antarctica. I believe that as the ice is melting, they're finding remnants of an ancient civilization. We know that Antarctica was not a frozen tundra for 12 million years, like main scientists want you to, mainstream scientists, 12 million years to build up all this ice. No, 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 that's not accurate. We know this because of the Perry Reese map. The Perry Reese map shows Antarctica, what it looked like without ice on it. And that's not even that old. So we know that Antarctica shifted into that spot. How? Because we know that Antarctica is surrounded by tectonic plates. And so that land mass was on a plate that slipped and had there was, a, there was something called a pole shift of the crust of the earth which shifted it from a more habitable climate into the position it is now. And that's why the animals that are being uncovered from the ice were flash frozen with undigested food in their stomachs. And there's an entire advanced civilization there, including some of the largest pyramids on earth, right in Antarctica. So apparently the pyramids down there are, are a lot they're a lot bigger than the oh, ones in, in, super in Egypt. Like they make the one in, at Giza, the Great Pyramid, look like, uh, you know, a, 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 a buggy, a dune buggy. I mean, these things are super massive. It makes me wonder if there is still an ancient civilization that lives in Antarctica. They just live within the ice. They adapted so well because they were so advanced that they actually live in the ice of Antarctica. And they're just making deals. And that's how we get our technology in the world is we're actually making deals with people in Antarctica to provide us the knowledge and information for some of this technology. If that's not the case, it does still make me wonder if there was an advanced civilization there. Of course, they'd probably all died off by now because of the frozen lands of Antarctica. If we are doing research, if we're excavating, if we're trying to dig up that civilization, who knows what we might be finding out there. And that's the reason why all these countries are making a treaty there, because they're all discovering amazing things. Deja vu is a really interesting phenomenon because it was first referred to as false memory in 400 AD, and that's exactly what it feels like. This glitch in the brain that comes from the collision of two different streams of awareness makes you feel like you've already seen this before. Now, some theoretical physicists will argue that deja vu is a sign that parallel universes exist, and deja vu happens when two of those universes are in sync for a short moment, which would be really cool, but if it's not that, then it could also be when one side of your brain receives information slightly before the other. So as one 
one side is finished processing, the other is just starting, causing you to feel like you've already experienced something while you're currently experiencing it. Similarly, it could just be bad admin because as you move through life, what you experience gets stored in short-term memory and eventually moves over into long-term memory. But sometimes your brain misses a step and logs your current experience right into the long-term memory bank, making you perceive the present as the past. Oh, I love when deja vu happens. It always is mind-blowing to me. I do have a theory behind deja vu. It's not anything spiritual or anything like that. But deja vu happens to me quite a bit, specifically when I'm playing Dungeons and Dragons. That's when deja vu happens a lot. My theory behind it though, especially when I'm playing D&D and it happens all the time when I'm playing D&D. So when I have deja vu during D&D specifically, my theory is, is because I know the mechanics and the system so well that my brain is already piecing together everything that's about to happen and it does happen. It's a 100% a confirmed what my brain thought was going to happen happening. And that's what gives you the feeling that you've experienced this just moments before, if not during that exact moment. Because your brain already pieced together everything that's going to happen, and it did. And that's my experience with deja vu and my theory about it. Let me know what you guys think, because deja vu is pretty crazy. I'm gonna go ahead and say that that's probably a fake video that was probably not a real cloud it did look pretty real but that little plume of smoke coming out just didn't seem genuine let me know what you guys think about this one of the reasons that time travel is so complicated is because there's a few different paradoxes that we're dealing with here. The first is called the inconsistent casual loop. Imagine that you're a time traveler and I give you the task of going back in time and getting rid of your grandpa when he's only 18. Once you pull the trigger, what happens to you? Because for you to take out your grandfather, you have to be alive to do so. But if your grandfather isn't alive long enough to have your dad, then you wouldn't exist in the first place and you wouldn't be able to take him out. But then if you don't take him out, he will live long enough to have your dad who will then have you, which will then give you the opportunity to go back in time and take him out again. The post-selected model says that once once you go back in time, your grandfather is essentially death proof. You can pull the trigger, but somehow it will malfunction, or something will get in your eye just at the perfect moment, causing you to miss. No matter what you do, the universe will prevent you from succeeding in your task. A consistent casual loop would go like this. You travel into the future and steal the cure for cancer and then bring it back into the present. You give this cure to a young scientist who then grows up to be the very same person that you stole the cure from in the first place. And this cycle continues on a loop over and over again. I like time travel theory. I think it's extremely fascinating but I'm starting to not believe in time travel. There's just too many loopholes. And I really feel like if time travel existed, we would see signs of it way more than what we do now. Now, I do think that the ability to look back into the past might be a thing. Being able to look to the future, I'm not quite sure if that's going to be a thing. But being able to travel back in time, I can kind of see that being a possibility in a specific way. I do have a theory on how time travel could potentially work for time traveling to the past. So you know how like in movies, when you time travel to the past, you physically get traveled back in time. In reality, I do not think that that's how time travel will work. That's way too risky. There's too many paradoxes that can happen. It's just way too risky. So the theory of traveling to the past would kind of work like this. You're hooked up to a machine that reads the light of the past. It's just searching for all the light fragments of the past and then displays to you, the viewer that's going back in time, the image of the past. So you're basically kind of like playing a video game in a way where you cannot interact with objects, you cannot manipulate objects, you cannot communicate with people because it's basically like you're a ghost. I could see time traveling work that way because you cannot jeopardize the past or the future. You're basically like a little floating around ghost that no one can see in the past. That's a pretty cool concept of time travel that I have. That's the only way I feel like time travel will ever work because it's just way too risky. Let me know what you guys think. And do you have any cool theories about time travel and how it could potentially work? Leave a comment down below letting me know because that's pretty interesting stuff to me. If we lived in this model, then this would have to be a giant ice wall that is the highest elevation than anywhere else. And it is.
If we lived here and the Earth is not a ball at 25,000 miles in circumference, then that would mean that the outer edge of Antarctica is like roughly 60,000 miles around? Captain James Cook sailed around Antarctica. He approached this giant ice barrier and was going to go around Antarctica, and he was constantly looking for a way in and kept going. He realized the wall was too tall, so he just kept sailing for 60,000 miles. He eventually realized, man, it's going to take a high jump to get over that wall. Also, if we lived here, then there would be a 24-hour sun here and not down here. All these places in the north have a 24-hour sun. That's right, all of them. They say the South Pole has a 24-hour sun, but if the North Pole has a 24-hour sun and all the continents around it, then the South Pole and all of the continents around it should have it as well. Like Australia, but it doesn't. Or South America. But it doesn't. I also feel like if we lived here and they were really trying to hide it from us, then no one would be able to go here. I mean, we would figure it out. Oh yeah, it is off limits. The Antarctic Treaty. Do you know of anything else that all countries agree on together? I know one other thing. The Artemis Accords. All countries agree on space exploration as well. Hmm. And of course, Google's going to tell you Antarctica is not off limits. It's just tightly regulated. They're almost like, look, you can go there, but you can't go there. You can go there, you can explore freely, but don't go there, don't explore freely. Look, we've tried to go by plane, we've tried to go by boat. Military is ready and waiting to take over communications and turn you around. Once you go flat, you never go back, and that's the thing. In order to see the big picture, you got to connect all of the dots. I know it's extremely dangerous, and... Th the likelihood of it happening is probably slim to none unless I become extremely wealthy to the point where I can actually get a plane, a boat, or whatever I need to get there and properly protect myself for this exploration, if it's even to be explored. I don't know if the military is going to turn me around or what. I find it extremely interesting as well that other countries all kind of have this same treaty with this place. It's really suspicious, you know? I'm sure there's probably all sorts of different types of tests that happen there, from extraterrestrial to super scientific weapons and things like that that our governments are just trying to hide. I would still like to really get a good hands-on experience and just see what it's like to explore Antarctica. I think that sounds extremely fun. I think the people from ancient Egypt were time travelers. Before you judge, listen. Did you know the power that the DNA holds? DNA is eternal, timeless. Think about how they prepared their death afterwards. They went into a tomb and closed themselves in a tomb to be sealed away from the elements for a period of time. They could see into time, so they knew this time was coming. Now, we curious humans go and open up these tombs and these coffins, not understanding the power of DNA. The moment that you expose the mummy tissue to the element of our reality, consciousness is now free to traverse our reality and create from our reality. We are consciousness, eternal beings. We are not this physical state. This physical state is a temporal state. DNA is the coding that we use to create the vessel that we now inhabit. Think of all the tombs they have been uncovering for how long now? Okay, the moment they uncover that, their consciousness becomes a part of this reality. Afterlife, anybody? Life is more than you know. It's eternally evolving, okay? The death state is, is an illusion in a sense because your consciousness never dies. However, don't get no thoughts about that because if you intentionally take yourself out of this life and don't allow yourself to pass naturally, your consciousness will recycle back into the program and you will forget who you are and then you're going to have to go through this whole hard ordeal just to remember who you are again. They entombed it away from our elements for a time in which we open them, introducing it back into our... Y'all don't understand the nature of reality. You're in a simulation you're okay there's there's very the words for it are very very limiting matrix simulation um holographic you know illusion they're very limiting very 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 limiting aspects the true nature of what you are within this reality how your consciousness collapsed particles for you to physically have an experience they make it sound simple and very robotic but it's so multi-dimensional multi-faceted Life itself is alive and intelligent, and you have the ability to see in time. This is why you can have people that can see the future. These are, premonitions are real, and the magic for which we talk about in movies and say is fiction is actually real. They just make it very sciencey to make it look fake, but in all reality, the depths and truth of it is the nature of reality. Now here we are, open up all these tombs of these people from the ancient Egyptian times that knew the full nature of reality, completely fully awakened and ascended. They knew sacred geometry. They are far more advanced than we could ever imagine. We just made them look stupid. Well, I mean, not stupid, more like we idolize them because of their royalties. We only saw the fence side. Y'all didn't see the spiritual side. They were beyond what you could even imagine.
you ever read the Emerald Tablets of Thoth? If you're not ready to take that pill and traverse the Matrix, do not. Do not read the Emerald Tablets of Thoth because the moment that you do, you wake up from the simulation. And then you remember who you are and then you have to go through the process of un unweaving all the stuff you wove with, I don't even know the word for it, your entire life from living in a simulated reality that you didn't even realize that you were simulating the entire time. And so now you have to undo what has been done. The balancing has to begin. You have to face your karma. The old projected system no longer works. It is crumbling because once you know the truth, you can no longer be guiled, be beguiled, okay? So you can no longer, the facade can no longer be held over you. But again, they make it look so mechanical so you don't understand the nature and process of it. So when it does start to happen, you're like freaking out because, oh my God, they're doing something to you in all reality, you're evolving. But with that being said, just remember you are important. Your DNA is eternal. So what are you waiting around for? Go live your life. Right. I do recall a few people from your past who've tried to come show you a particular type of way, but their ways were t so twisted and so idolized and so perverted, you didn't even see the truth. Now it's too late. So you, you got to either figure it out or you're going to, you're going to, manifestation, if you don't know what manifestation is, you're about to come into a form of instant manifestation because maybe you're walking into heaven. Heaven gives you exactly what you believe. The moment you think it, it is it. Okay. That's how great and God, glorious God is. Y'all just don't even know because y'all have been doctrinated. Imagine right now you walked into heaven. Imagine that fear that you have within you would manifest instantly for you to have to experience. Imagine walking into heaven where where your thoughts became reality and poof, everything you thought. If your mind is not trained, man, you are going to be manifesting the darkest dark because fear is one of the most powerful manifesting tools in this reality. That's why they have you under the spell of fear so that you create for them. But y'all don't even see that you're creating. Therefore, you're giving your power away because y'all been stuck in the matrix. Y'all look at me with that look on your face. Hmm? Huh? Because y'all don't understand what I'm talking about and y'all think I'm loony because it's science fiction. Now, baby, <laughs> that's how they got you, boo-boo. That's how they got you. At this point, it really doesn't matter what you do because life is basically going to reaffirm everything I've told you because you wait. You wait. You, you wait how things just, you're going to think of it, it's going to become. So you better be making sure you're thinking right. You don't want to experience what's to come with thinking wrong. It's the nature of reality, baby. It's the nature of reality. You're an avatar. <laughs> Always have been. 0440 on the timer. Why? Because you're a freaking intelligent machine that is programmed through numbers. You just don't understand yourself. Indoctored nation here. No, I'm out there. This world needs out there, clearly. The whole definition of insanity is like doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, which is what we've been doing. Not no more, baby. We bring in the fifth dimensional reality to who you are so you can understand your expanded self. Project Kona Blue. Ever heard of it? Well, take a listen. So it's interesting. This is a program that we've just learned about now from Arrow. They just released newly declassified documents from Homeland Security, and it lays out this special access program or top secret program called Kona Blue. The purpose of which, according to these documents, was uh, to acquire, to study, to engineer, and to identify technology from what they called AAVs or advanced aerospace vehicles so we'll come here what does the pentagon even do okay they failed six audits they came out with a paper that's literally 60 pages that will be 120 or something after it's completed that states that there's no such thing as extraterrestrials but we have bob lazar we have chris mellon we have lou alexander we have other people who are up at the top who have on oath and straight up said yeah this stuff exists uh, i was informed in the course of my official duties of a multi-decade uh, uap crash retrieval and reverse engineering program the government's like, no, it doesn't. We created paperwork back here in the 40s, but, you know, nothing ever came of it. At the same time, then you've got Skunk Works, who's coming out with some crazy stuff. Listen. New materials that are on the uh, lab bench right now, they can literally change shape on command. They can become almost a muscular material. We could have an airplane that optimizes its shape for the different flight conditions it's in. On top of that, Congress was just briefed last night by the company AARO, who literally just told Congress the United States of America can't handle this stuff. And that, that, you know, America really can't handle this stuff, Congressman. We really just need to be real careful about it. And, I and they were like, can't handle what? The stuff we're talking about shouldn't even be in the skiff. And AARO's like, they cannot handle it. What can we not handle? The fact that the government's stealing our goddamn money? Ooh, that's such a... I didn't know that was happening. Not about the little green men or the flying saucers. It's about what the heck are they spending all this dadgum money on? Is this project deeper than the Pentagon? Has it gotten lost somewhere due to the fact that it's so compartmentalized? Or is it just a confusion technique brought on to us by the U.S. government? probably that one but i am really hoping that something like brazil or france steps up to the plate here and just drives it home pay attention to people like lou elizondo because again they've been commenting this 
and Christopher Mellon said this. So, something's coming. I just hope they knock it out of the park. It just makes me wonder if that's going to be the new tactic in the future. We're just going to completely dismiss aliens or extraterrestrial, and the next move is this is just advanced weaponry from other countries because it seems like it's leading that way. And it could very well be. It could all be extremely advanced technology from other countries, and it always has been. But to us, we thought it was aliens, so the governments were like, oh, we'll just roll with that. And now they're starting to change their mind. That's just what I'm kind of wondering, you know? All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. As always, if you found any of these clips interesting, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.